moving on uh, to the next uh, topic that we have right content strategy to drive the success of marketing initiatives uh, please join me in inviting suhasini kirloskar uh, she is an entrepreneur and founder of market access consulting which provides strategic marketing outsource services and training to b2b brands suhasini has been in, uh, involved as a mentor and marketing consultant to high tech startups for over 15 years now over to you suhasini Hey, thank you, Kalpesh. Thanks very much. And uh, yeah, that was a very interesting session by Vivek. So after discussing uh, a push strategy or an outbound strategy, which is about pitching, emailing, and cold calling, we now move on to something which I'm sure many people are also looking at, which is the inbound strategy. And today, if you consider your inbound strategy, whether it's you know content marketing, whether it's SEO, uh, where you really want people to reach out to you. uh the content you know content plays a uh, plays a, a big role in that so i see people putting in a lot of effort in terms of content uh but then you know there's if you take a step back it's like uh, what are the goals of that content what's measurable what are the topics what are the subjects um who may you really writing for have you understood them so that's where content strategy comes in and i'll uh, i'll kind of quickly walk us through uh, how to create this content strategy so i'm sharing my screen now is presentation visible yes it is okay great yeah so uh, that's what we are talking about today content strategy and planning and how to create this content strategy and just a quick introduction of myself so i i work in b2b marketing content strategy social media my team does content for people uh, you know in primarily in technology but also in other um, verticals such as healthcare insurance and so on and we work with clients based in the usa canada australia the uae uh i also do a lot of training so i am involved with the uh, midcon institute of management i am on the advisory board for digital marketing and i also i am involved with uh, manipal pro learn and and google fiki the google fiki digital unlocked program so uh, uh you know working in content i actually saw some days ago uh, a couple of years ago i saw that the content strategist role in the us is now like a senior and a strategic role so then i actually started looking into this what is this role and where can one learn b2b content strategy so i then created an e learning program also which is published on udemy so it's with that background that i'm kind of bringing these best practices here today for our audience okay so uh, let's start with uh, uh, this is something which has been a uh, published data which has been published 2020 report uh, by content marketing institute usa so uh, 69% of uh, the most successful b2b marketers have a well documented content strategy what's very interesting and what is not on this slide is that the people whom they classify as least successful okay in that group of companies only 16% of the people have a well documented content strategy so they say that there's a correlation between successful marketing and having a well documented content strategy so there's a very good reason for us to be discussing what we are discussing today and with content we we mean all the material that a brand publishes which could be a document a video a social media post that has the objective of communicating with the target audience and this content communicates what the brand does and who it is actually okay so what is content strategy so content strategy shouldn't be something which is scary which is just something which you know some strategy consultant will give you something nicely bound leather bound and make a presentation and then you just kind of put it away uh, in your in your stuff that's not what it is uh it's it's not something that you should just pay some consultant you know, like big money to produce some you know heavy thing called strategy rather content strategy is a well thought out approach that you know you and me should work out together and it starts with what you see on the slide why you create what you do what you plan to create and finally how you plan to create it so in this why what and how is is really what you need to define as your content strategy 
yeah and we are going to be looking more at these areas so this is what gives us clarity to define a vision and then a plan to realize that vision i'll move on because we'll be looking at these areas going ahead so here's some more information okay about uh, uh, how you know uh, what are the kind of goals that content helps us to achieve and b2b marketers b2b cmos have said that these are the goals that they work uh, on with content and if you also see the two columns it's because this year all of them have said that content plays an even more important role compared to the ones who said that last year so content is actually growing overall in the in the b2b marketing landscape and if you just look at the top four or five goals creating brand awareness educating audiences which tends to be very important with technology marketing building credibility and trust of course we all know that generating demands and leads yes that's something that you know is bread and butter for us and nurturing those leads so those are some of the top marketing goals that content plays a very important role in supporting so uh if you really look at why we create content and uh, when we create content which is valuable uh it's relevant to specific target audiences so you may be trying to reach out to the you know chief of hr because that's your product or service or you may be trying to reach out to the cfo or to the head of you know manufacturing or whatever uh the content of course has to be tailored to that person uh and to the type of organization so when you create that kind of content it helps you to take the position of a trusted advisor because actually in b2b marketing nobody wants to like engage with somebody who comes across as being like sales you know you i i want to sell to you i want to pitch to you but we do like to engage with someone who is going to provide us something which is of value information and that's why we uh, look for these trusted advisors okay and then uh in the buyer journey if you look at the buyer journey as we move from awareness to consideration to the decision making phase and there are many different ways of defining this buyer journey some people use the ida model which i like which is awareness interest desire and action but but there are other models as well but at each stage of this buyer journey you need specific content okay so we have to plan uh the content that we will provide at each stage of this journey and content enables lead generation because potential buyers seek information they find your content and they engage with your brand which is the whole inbound content strategy okay inbound marketing content drives seo and google values websites which have fresh high quality content uh that's relevant to people who are searching for information on google and that's how content drives seo and basically today content drives uh is the engine that drives email marketing even digital ads like google ads seo uh none of these video marketing none of these can actually move forward without content so coming to the first very important aspect of uh, of the content strategy you should have goals for content uh it's not something that you kind of put out there and wait and hope for the best we need to have very specific goals and uh you know we've been hearing this phrase for a very long time i think from the time we were in school that you need to have smart goals but it's still so relevant and true for content that i still work with this content goals should be smart that is specific measurable attainable relevant and time bound so here on this slide i've tried to give some examples when we say a goal should be specific something like by publishing this video or publishing this white paper or this blog post you know 5000 target profile should become aware of our new product or our or our service i uh, remember that when we try to pitch you know even what we discussed in the first session it's always easier when people are aware remember that nobody buys cold people buy when when they have been warmed up and one of the first important parts of being warmed up is actually at least creating awareness your company name your product name what that product does and the usps that's like the first step of awareness so content helps to provide those so you could have specific goals about creating brand awareness uh, and measurable goals 
now an another example of a measurable goal is we will increase the dwell time of visitors to our website so people are coming to our website are they just spending like 10 seconds there you spent on a google ad and you brought somebody to a page did they just bounce off the page in 10 15 seconds or did they kind of read what was on the page and then click some relevant links and then overall spend three four five minutes on your website because actually the longer they spend engaging with your content the stronger is you know their association with your brand and their willingness to actually absorb your sales pitch so that could be another example of a measurable goal the goal should be attainable yeah i may want to say that you know the whole us market should kind of start looking for my product in one month but it, it that is a difficult goal to uh, achieve of course goals are attainable provided one has the budget and the bandwidth so we need to think of what are the attainable goals based on our budgets bandwidth and where we are currently goals should be relevant so uh, example of a, a goal that is like not relevant so if you have like a social media post that is supposed to say bring people to consume um, a particular white paper or an ebook or or a uh, you know i'm sorry my cat is troubling me here yeah or uh, uh, bring them to a particular page on the website to consume a blog post and if you just have you know a lot of likes on that social media post but people didn't kind of click through and come and engage with your content then likes is not like a relevant goal so it should not fe feature as a relevant goal so goals should be relevant to what we are trying to achieve in marketing and uh, goals should be time bound like you know you want uh, your newsletter subscription to grow to 7000 10000 20000 50000 but by when say in one month three months six months so when you define it by time bound and phase wise you can track it better okay so that's just about the goals aspect of content strategy uh, of course a very very important aspect of content strategy is to uh, know our audience with a very deep understanding and target everything that we do the content that we create for that target audience and there are two aspects to knowing this audience yeah so one is we understand them as a group okay that is the audience research aspect where we have internal data available as well as certain published data available um, like uh, like industry reports and so on and internal data like you know everything that you have learned by selling if you can gather that from the sales team or if you yourself have been in sales what are the kind of questions that people ask what are the kind of objections that they ask uh, as well as you know what are their objectives what are what are their competing choices that they have other than your own product or service so this is really the audience research part which is at the macro level and then we come to the uh, to the uh, to the actual uh, buyer persona so the buyer persona is helps us to identify our readers or our audience as individuals and connect with them as closely as we can because when you publish content obviously it's meant for you know public consumption or or consumption of a wider range of people but you need to write in a way that will almost connect with the person so if i read something today and it says you know these are some of the challenges you face and these are some of the problems that you have with your existing choices but here is now a new choice for you maybe it connects if that's what is going on in my life at this po point so in order to be able to create content like that we need to do this buyer persona exercise okay so let's say if our main audience is you know chief people officers chief hr officers in manufacturing companies located in the asia pacific region so the first stage we need to have that published data about this um you know this industry what's happening in the manufacturing uh, in asia pacific and maybe what's happening what have different head of hr been saying at conferences you know reading their uh, reports and so on that's really the first one and the second one after doing certain interviews and after engaging with them with them one on one we actually create a very specific persona this is the person these are you know his or her objectives typical 
um, demographic profile, typical profile of that person, educational and so on. And uh, what are the kind of media they consume? What are the kind of portals or magazines or conferences they, they attend? And then we start kind of creating content for them. So this is a fictionalized representation of your ideal customer and it helps to create content that relates to people as real human beings. Yeah. And this is based on interviews. So that's why there's a photo of an interview here. Uh, so once your buyer personas are in place, another very important aspect of your uh, content strategy is the brand voice. Okay. So your brand voice, how do you define your brand voice? So the brand voice is the personality or the emotion which is infused into the content. So imagine if all the content that you create was to, you know, have a conversation with your readers, then what would be your voice or tone in that conversation? And it's important to have a consistent a brand voice because otherwise, you know, you create 50 pieces of content and they are all uh, like a random assortment and no strong brand image kind of comes through uh, from them. So, uh, you know, when you, when you speak to a friend or if you speak to a relative, that person has a certain way of relating with you which you can totally rely on, you can trust. I will always get this kind of support from this person. I will always get this kind of guidance from this person. That is really uh, that brand voice. And the tone, the tone differs because today the person may be greeting you happy Diwali and tomorrow the person may be calling you and saying, hey, listen, you know, you should take your, your studies more seriously or whatever. So that is the tone. The tone changes from uh, situation to situation. One thing that I'd like to tell you here is that some of the best brands like, um, like uh, MailChimp, I think Salesforce, Microsoft, their brand voice guidelines are actually easy to find on the web. So that's really helpful because you can actually see some of the way that they have worked out their brand voice, their instructions to their content creators, and there are some good practices that we can pick up from those, uh, those guidelines. Okay. And then we come to a very important point, which is what is the kind of content that we should create? So typically these days in content, we work at three levels, which is the theme, uh, the pillar and the cluster. Okay. So for example, a data analytics company, a theme could be say business intelligence, uh, data analytics, then it could be uh, data visualization. So these could be some of the themes. Okay. Now what happens with this concept of pillar and cluster? So there are many different ways of looking at it. Uh, even your website design today, uh, it's, it's a good idea to be aware of this concept of pillar and cluster content. So your pillar page and your cluster, and I'm going to just show you that with an example. It's also a very effective SEO strategy. So let's say you are in the business of office design. Now I've just given some uh, monthly keyword volume. So how many people per month are searching for these terms? I think this may be USA and it's a little old, maybe three, four months old. So if there are 5,400 people searching for office design in the US every month, that's your high volume search you should have one page about office design. And then you need to think that there are other relevant searches, which may be long tail, what we call long tail. So they are um, lower volume, but a person who gives that search may be a very, very relevant contact for you. Okay. So maybe if somebody gives a search saying office design interiors, office design modern, office design ideas, office design furniture. So maybe you provide office design furniture. Now that's a volume of 320 a month. So it's lower than office design, but it is very, very relevant to you. So you should have pages for optimized for these, uh, these terms. And you could have a blog post, you could have a case study, which optimize these terms. Now these pages should link back to your pillar page. So if office design is your pillar page, then this is the cluster and these cluster topics should actually link back to your uh, pillar page. This helps to optimize 
your website for these search terms specifically office design which means that one of the reasons for one of the reasons for deciding what content to create is by uh, giving a thought to uh, keyword search data okay and there's one more thing that i like very much i don't know if it's there in my presentation but before i get into distribution channels i'll just go up one more way of looking at uh, what to what kind of content to create so what i told you right now is more from the keyword search data or from the seo standpoint but one other way of approaching what kind of content to create is from the uh, i would say lead generation or uh, inbound strategy which works really well is that if you list all the questions that your prospects ask from the beginning to the end of the um, buyer journey okay so there are lots and lots of questions and right from the beginning right from the first one that um, what does your product do and who else uses your product you know so a very very like i just want to get to know whether i should even engage with you that could be a very top of the funnel kind of a question right to uh, can you show me why this is better than something else like for example why is uh, you know your modular office better than a traditional like custom made office okay so that's like now you are at a comparison maybe i have a question like typically what what, what does your solution cost you cost me um, or you know then i say that hey how long will it take to implement uh, or what's the change management process like which is now like a much more bottom of the funnel question so if you and you know this information these questions are really known to you because you've been selling they are known to all the people in your company who have been selling so you just have to get them into a room and ask them what are these questions now content that answers these questions actually does really well so content that uh, brings in leads is typically reviews uh, uh information about cost um, comparisons okay these are some of the elements that are, that do really well and you should be looking at creating content that answers these questions sorry to interrupt yeah yeah so i said sorry to interrupt but uh, there is a lag in your voice maybe you want to switch off your video it is taking some bandwidth maybe i'll just do that yeah did you lose anything uh well last 10 seconds i gave okay i'm sorry about that so if you actually uh, you know all of us know those questions that uh, our prospects ask because we've been selling or there are other colleagues in your company who know those questions and content that answers those questions is the one that is most effective for inbound whether it's for an email campaign for social media posts whether it's for your blog posts whether it's for your video marketing content that answers the questions that come from the beginning to the end of the uh, buyer journey uh, those are really content pieces that you should think of creating because if your one prospect has that question then a hundred other you know uh, leads or 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 potential prospects have the same question in their mind with that i'll just move on to uh, yeah content distribution channels okay so uh, another important aspect of planning for content creation is how will you really get this content in front of your target audience so we already discussed in the first presentation today by vivek about uh, email uh, an email strategy uh, some of the other content channels which are important are uh, linkedin organic posts uh, linkedin sponsored in mail where you can have your email sent to specific designations and kind of organizations uh, by paying something to linkedin then linkedin sponsored content so your content appears on the timeline uh, again of certain specific types of profiles this is again a paid uh, option 
Uh, Facebook also works very well. People think Facebook doesn't work for for uh, content for B two B marketing, but there are certain products and services for which Facebook works really well. Instagram works well if your product or service has a strong visual component, something that looks good, feels good. You know, some good looking reports, great dashboards. <clears throat> you could consider Instagram. Webinars and podcasts. Yes, I think that we are all aware of, especially since the lockdowns. Webinars, podcasts, videos as well, uh, and conferences. So for all of these, you require the right content, and these are some of the channels by which you can uh, kind of distribute content. So uh, I have kind of exhausted my thirty minutes, Kalpesh, but I'll be happy to take questions. Um, yeah, and just for people to connect with me, LinkedIn is works really well. Uh, my course on Udemy is called Content Strategy and Planning in B two B Marketing, so that's easy to find. And my email is given here. Sure, thank you so much, Suhasini. Uh, audience, we are uh, we are inviting questions right now. So if you have any questions, please put them in the Q and A. So what kind of KRAs the content marketing leader would have? Any specific thoughts on this? Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it actually, uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, you know, the thing is these days, if you look at the buyer journey, okay, uh, even, even in a category like, let's say a, a very different category like jewelry. Okay. Earlier, maybe you saw a hoarding, uh, a billboard and you, were driving down a street and you saw a shop front and you walked into the shop. So the buyer journey was like, you see the, see the brand and maybe see the visual merchandise and some good advertisement and you walk into the shop. Okay. Today, when it comes to B2B marketing, when it comes to digital platforms, the buyer journey is, is not straight like that. It's very, very zigzag. So I'll give you an example. So maybe I kind of first see something on uh, somebody's LinkedIn post. Then, you know, I uh, was looking for something on Google. I found a blog post. I landed on that same brand's uh, website. Uh, maybe I liked the blog post I read. So now the brand is kind of in my brain. Then later on, I received, say, maybe an email or because of remarketing, that brand showed me a display ad. And then maybe I signed up for a... a a webinar. Okay. And then uh, at the end of the webinar, I said, Hey, listen, you know, I have a question. Can somebody from your side help me? So I interacted with a human being, right? So now the objective of content is to drive all these touch points forward. So these are all touch points. Okay. So when we say a lead, the lead happens because all those touch points, the content was right and the content delivered and the content performed. So the correct content was there in the blog post that brought me to the website. You know, the correct content was there in the webinar. So I signed up for the webinar, right? So the, now I would say that you have to know your touch points and you have to define what, what is, how do you want to take that touch point forward? And that content has to deliver. Did, did that make sense? I'll give you one more example. Today, if suppose, you know, you're planning to uh, read a book, a book costs what, three, four, five hundred rupees. So it's a low risk purchase for you. It's not going to make you rich or poor, whether you buy that book. I mean, it's, it's a low risk purchase. But still, like, suppose today you saw an ad on Facebook for a book. You don't click on that book and say, buy now, uh, right there. What you do is you see the ad, it's just connected. Okay. You know, the book title has gone into your brain. Now, tomorrow, if you saw my Facebook post and I said, you know, I really like that book. You say, oh, okay. So has me like that book. And then the third day, if you went to some uh, website, Times of India or whichever website, some portal, and they had a review book, book released this month and they gave it a good review. Then you say, oh my God, this book, like it's making waves. Then maybe you go to Amazon and you 
look for that book and you read the reviews and then you buy it so that is four touch points just for a book which costs like 500 rupees and you can imagine all of us are selling high value products and services so there are a lot of touch points so the right content has to be there at every touch point and has to uh, further the bio journey and grow the numbers of people who are engaging with that content those are the kras sure sure so we have a leading question now what is the ideal quantity of cluster pages which can be created to a pillar page for optimized seo yeah so uh, the way most uh, people are saying it at least hubspot what hubspot is recommending now is about 15 so most of our clients what they do is like if they go in for one uh, topic like suppose uh, say business intelligence then uh, we will typically create about 15 blog posts in a month which are things like uh, business intelligence best practices uh, techniques for business intelligence what will business intelligence look like in 2021 of course depending on the keywords but hubspot is recommending about 15 and that's one reason why uh, content uh, marketing and content creation <laughs> as a business is growing because hubspot is growing is is making his recommended 15 now sure and content length is uh, we anything between 700 to 1500 words uh longer is better but it becomes you know very very involved to write to be able to write 1500 words becomes like uh, quite a lot of effort so sometimes two blog posts of you know 800 900 1200 words may work out better yeah all right so and what are the editorial and commercial benefits of creating interactive content so interactive now again it depends on what you mean by interactive so if it's something like i'm assuming something like a calculator like uh, what should this solution cost me what should cloud storage cost me and if you have a calculator on your site i'm assuming that is what you mean by interactive content uh, that might work really well because if it answers a question that a person has at a particular time in the bio journey you might need to do something around it for example you might need to write some keyword optimized blog post around that but something like that works well because uh, as i said content that answers questions in the bio journey works well and also you are uh, uh, you know you are increasing one more touch point and engagement with the brand yeah so last question generally we find similar type of content you know in case of software services so uh, does it really work in case of big orders of solution sales yeah so you know big orders of solution sales yes because uh, see there is first of all there are two types of content one is the content which is for inbound like your blog posts and then obviously in your big orders for solution sales also there is content which is your a uh, sales related content you are going to send a presentation you are going to send a pdf you are going to send a an ebook you are going to send a white paper so obviously that is a uh, content which is required for the for the for the sale itself you know as far as inbound is concerned yes your content has to be differentiated so you can't just rehash the same words and hope that you will get a lot of leads from them so there has to be something different uh good videos uh you know good uh, calculators good uh, re reviews good comparisons those are the things that work yeah i guess with that uh, we have come to the end of question and answer round uh, thank you so much suhasini once again and thank you both the speakers vivek suhasini both uh, we we had a lot of useful insights and we are sure attendees would have found today's webinar informative and useful thank you all for joining and do help us with the feedback post this webinar uh in the interest of time if any of these questions were uh, we could not answer them please drop an email uh, at pune@nascom.in and our team will get back to you yes thank you kalpesh and nascom kalpesh and nascom team thank you very much yeah and all the participants thank you yeah yeah thank you thank you for such a great session yeah we'll be happy to take any questions offline Thank you. Sure, Vivek. I'll connect with you as well. Thank you bye so bye. much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.